Oh, who would you have? Are you fancy? Dinner party? Hmm. Not really thought about it. I guess what I'd really like is for the person who invented something really useful, like the seatbelt or sun cream, to meet the person who claims to have invented the non-iron shirt. Then I could say, hey Toby, this is Ken, he's an inventor too, you two are going to get on like a house on fire. Toby invented something that really works, it prevents skin cancer and people all around the world use it on a regular basis. Then I'd say, Ken, who's Ken, the non-iron shirt guy, Ken, remind me, what did you invent again? Then he'd have to tell everybody at the party, shamefaced, that he'd taken a normal shirt, did nothing to it, and tried to con the whole world that they didn't need to iron it. Then I'd open my dinner jacket to reveal that I'm wearing my very own, very creased, non-iron shirt. And I'd say, look everybody, I'm, I'm wearing, wearing one, one right, right now. now, a non-iron shirt. Isn't it amazing? I saved so much time by not ironing it today. And you can't even tell, can you? You can't even tell that it hasn't been ironed. And everyone would look at the crumpled, creased shirt in horror, especially John Lennon. Oh, my dad loves Beatles. Then Ken would look really embarrassed and say he has to go home. I'd urge him to reconsider, but he'd say he really can't stay because he has to be up early in the morning, to which I'd retort, well, it can't be to do any ironing, Ken, because that's a thing of the past now, isn't it? Thanks to you, and everyone laughs, and so does he. But in his eyes, I know he's dying inside. Then I'd walk him to the door, and as we shake hands, I'd pull him close to me and say in a low voice, all shirts are non-iron shirts if you just don't iron them, mate. And he'd look down, avoid an eye contact, nod his head, and then leave. So anyway, do you fancy getting dessert? Definitely not. <laughs>